Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, we are back on that Diablo immortal nonsense. I woke up today to see a tweet from a popular YouTuber featuring a screenshot of a person's reply to what I assume is a video on Diablo Immortal and about how they got sucked in, how they kept buying more and more in game, and then their addictive personality took over and, well, the rest is history. So I was gonna reply with how free to play games haven't changed in the last 10 years. They're the exact same thing they've always been. There is literally no difference in my eyes between Diablo Immortal and Raid Shadow Legends, the game everyone loves to bash. They pretty much have the same marketing scheme. You can play both without spending money, but the point is, they're gonna do everything in their power to get you to spend that money. But then I saw an article over on Forbes called, Can Blizzard Fix Diablo Immortal? Do they even want to? And I kept thinking, why? Why is this a thing so many people can't wrap their minds around? But as I read the article, I realized the reason people are hurt and confused and angered is cause it's Blizzard, a company that won so many a nerd's heart over the last 25 years. The company that I can name off the top of my head, at least 10 friends that wanted to go work there. It was their dream. And more importantly, they are the same company that released this StarCraft II video mocking free-to-play games for their actual payment scheme BS. Yes, we all saw the you have phones, don't you moment at BlizzCon. We are all aware that Overwatch has far too few updates and not enough content to actually be fun for a lot of people. We are aware that Heroes of the Storm crashed and burned. We are aware that Hearthstone is kind of pay to buy cards the game. We are aware that Diablo 3 flopped and don't even get me started on the death of RTS games and StarCraft and stuff at Blizzard. We are aware of all of that, but I think this might be the first time Blizzard chose to make a game where spending money is the point. That's the whole gimmick. If you wanna be the best, you can't just earn it. You'll never be able to. Now I know some of you are probably like, but what about Genshin Impact? That game has purchases and preys on addictive personalities too. Yes, you are correct, but it also allows you to save up currency and buy things with it eventually. It's why people don't lose their minds over Hearthstone or League of Legends or other games with purchases, cause in theory, if you play enough, you can get what you want. Diablo Immortal, on the other hand, thanks to those who have been doing research online and spending real money, is actually so much worse. If you spend $25 for a boosted run in a dungeon, the rewards are so significantly better that it makes no sense to do the run without the boost. According to the article, there's a streamer playing Diablo Immortal spending $25 every dungeon run for 10 gem drops until he gets a five star. He spent $7,000 so far and has gotten None. So why? Why make this game? The answer is actually kind of obvious and one that Forbes hits on. This isn't made for the US or EU. This game is made for Asian audiences where pay to win is much more common. It's putting Diablo into that market ahead of Diablo 4 to boost sales of that game when it eventually comes out. And Blizzard has chosen to ignore all the pushback or the negativity online in the bet that by producing this game and pushing it in Eastern markets, that at the end of the day, they're gonna make a ton more money because of it. And that's where they're at, right? This isn't the blizzard of old. This is the blizzard of Bobby Kotick. And this is the blizzard where all they care about are shareholders. And that's just the truth. Meanwhile, on the flip side, in so much better industry news, Dragon Age Q&A workers have voted unanimously to form Canada's first video game labor union. With a vote of 16 to zero, the testers employed through Keyword Studios, which we have talked about before, testers who worked on the Old Republic, Mass Effect's Legendary Edition, and now the new Dragon Age, were very angry that Keywords was asking them to return to the office back on May 9th. But Keywords has this insane sick policy that does not take into account COVID. So basically, if you went back to work, got COVID, you have to abide by Alberta Canada's 14-day quarantine process. But, According to keywords, you will not be paid for any of that. So basically they're telling employees that if you come into the office and you get sick, you're shit out of luck. Now with this union, they can begin bargaining for things like increased pay, stay at home work, and more. We're excited to move into bargaining with the employer and start towards a more equitable working situation, they wrote. We would like to thank the brave workers across North America who are fighting for a better workplace. We're here in solidarity with you. With the successful unionization of Raven Software's QA team and now this, there appears to be momentum for the often talked about but rarely acted upon unionization 
of games workers. Hell, maybe one day we'll finally get that streamer YouTuber union. Wouldn't that be lovely? Speaking of lovely, that's where we're going. Patreon.com slash Jesse Cox, where you can join people like Jay Cremwell, Colton Von Dalen, and E.D. Anyway, that's it for the show. Thanks again for all the comments and likes and support. Uh, sharing all the tweets. It's the best. You're the best. That's it. I'll see y'all tomorrow.